Is there a major hole on the 49ers? Is there just like one place where it's like, oh man, it, it, you know that there's there's problems with like that's a that's a big issue on the offensive side of the ball. Part of me says wide receivers, and I know some people are like, what you tripping? We got the I you show we got Debo we got Juwan Jennings uh, we got George Kittle but I think we need to get another wide receiver hopefully in this draft I don't see us bringing in a free agent wide receiver who can really make a difference at this point so hopefully we draft another wide receiver you can never have too many people who can make plays with the ball with the ball in their hands I would love to see us get a uh, backup tight end I, I, I think Ross Duelli I think he's solid uh, Warner is solid but it would be great if we could draft a tight end day two or day three um, who's as, as athletic as Kittle, who can make plays similar to Kittle. Uh, but the major hole, it's got to be the offensive line. Um, outside of the big silver back uh, on the left side, there's a lot of question marks. You know, Lincoln Tomlinson, we let go in free agency. Well, we have Aaron Banks. Supposedly he's supposed to slide in that role, but it is a question mark. He's got all the ability in the world, but can he actually – when he gets in between the lines, can he be a productive player in the NFL? We don't know. So that's a question mark. Alex Mack, he hasn't said he's coming back, but all indications are that he will be back. Uh, so so that's a plus. At the right guard spot, I don't know how everyone feels about Daniel Brunskill. I think he is a solid, versatile player who can play basically every position along the offensive line. But I think we could get someone who's a little bit better in pass blocking situations at that right guard spot. And I don't know if that player is on this roster now. Uh, so there there are question marks there. Right tackle, Mike McGlinchey. We know he's pretty good in the run game. In the in the past game, I think he leaves a little bit to, to be desired. He's also coming back from a quad tear. And it's one of those quad tear injuries where we don't know if he'll come back and be that same person or that same player. And, and some 49er fans would feel that that same player is garbage. So <laughs> I think there is a question mark there. If I think if McGlinchey comes back, he can be somewhat similar to what he was. I think that's a solid right tackle. I don't think he'll be with us for years to come, but I think at right tackle, I think he's solid um, this year. But I think the offensive line has the biggest question marks going into the season. There's just a lot of unproven players outside of Mac um and uh trent williams and i hope we get better than brusco at right guard so we have players along the offensive line and um and we will talk about this later but about who will draft and who's our draft crush but for me major hole on the 49ers is the offensive line absolutely yeah yeah it's one of those things like earlier we were talking about you know it's like on both sides of the coin it's like you know there's a lot of uh, for me i feel like there's a lot of reason to be uh hopeful maybe maybe a little less optimistic about the offensive line but we do have a lot of guys it, it, it doesn't feel yeah. like you know it doesn't feel like you know we have three potential practice squad guys who are gonna you know play on that line you know all these guys have you know and i feel like uh aaron banks and Jalen moore will step up i think the first guy i heard talk about it was luke luna where he said, you know, those guys are just way better dudes at uh, pass protecting. And so that kind of stirred my brain into, hey, that's why we're keeping Lance, uh, Banks, Moore, um, Trey Sermon. It feels like we're kind of iced all of them. Let's let them just, you know, kind of uh, marinate, you know, their rookie season. Let's, uh, you, you know, let's come through guns blazing the second year. So I'm hopeful uh, that that's all going to pan out, you know, with a lot of gold. Um you know, so uh, my, my biggest hole, uh, I just kept on having flashbacks of Cooper Cup dicing us up on third down. And, you know, uh, we had obviously the injury to Jason Verrett and then going into what was it? I think that's the first show I ever I came on to your show was the game after um, we won to get into the playoffs versus L.A. Okay. And I remember writing all the notes down how I think. Uh, Dante Johnson slid in there for K1 in that particular game. And uh, he was just getting diced up over and over and over. And my thing is, is like when you uh, we got a lot of length in the uh, secondary position, that's that's that position. That nickel is when you do want that shorter, more shiftier dude 
that could keep that could keep up, you know, with the Cooper Cup. And I thought Cooper Cup was a lot shorter than he is. I guess he's six two. But he run <laughs> he runs like he's a you know, he makes his cuts like he's a Darren Sproles or something right, like that. Right. So so my my whole, you know, um I mean major i don't know but you know uh when it comes playoff time i feel like we have to have that you know guy who can just uh, be a momentum changer stop some of those third third down conversions as far as uh you know so that's why you know um i feel like we definitely definitely need a nickel corner i don't know if a guy like emmanuel mostly could keep up with some of those uh tyree kill type players you know so that's kind of we'll we'll see I think, sure. uh, I think I think K1 Williams, I think he was very good at that position uh, since he's been with the 49ers. I know he didn't have the best year this year and uh, sucks to see K1 go. He signed with the Denver Broncos. But I think we could have that slot corner, um, you know, on this roster. It could it could be Manuel Mosley. It could be Demo Lenore. I won't be surprised, though, if the 49ers uh, draft a corner in this draft. Uh, I know we, uh, we we took two last year, and I think we should continue to take more this year. Uh, you can never have too many uh, corners because we don't want to see. I know the faithful does not want to see a return of Josh Norman. So hey, we should. Bring, I know we I know we brought back Darquiz Denard, which is great, but hopefully we bring back another corner. I'll I'll give you my hole for the defense, and. I, I would have to say an edge rusher opposite of uh, Nick Bosa. I know we have Samson. I know we um, D Ford is technically still on the roster, but not really expecting um, him to play this year. Uh, we brought back Kerry Hyder, I think, which is good. But it would be great to have a young, talented edge rusher that we could that you know Chris Casera can uh, give him his thoughts, his wisdom, and let that uh, impact this young guy that we draft on the field and uh it would be great to add a young athletic edge rusher and i think there are plenty in this draft and uh i think that'd be great we have the best defensive line coach in the nfl chris kuserik and he makes a lot of guys have their best seasons you look at Kerry hyder in 2020 he had eight and a half sacks you look at arden key you know he had one of his best seasons since he's been in the nfl so it would be great to have a young athletic guy under multiple year contracts so three or four years because a lot of the guys we have now are just on one year deals um and you know there's no telling if they'll be here for at least three to four years so i think a young edge rusher opposite of uh, nick bosa i think that would be great 